Hey there, everyone. It's Kathy, and it is time for day two of the Make It to Break Challenge. This is a five day live stream series that happens at um, 12 noon my time every day. And since I'm on Atlantic Standard Time, that makes it 11 o'clock. Eastern. So if you're in the New York City time zone, there that gives you a little orientation that you are about um, that these lives will happen at 11 o'clock. Um, and today we are talking about our topic for today is another kind of mindset shift to keep you heading towards the semester break with ease. Okay, so that doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, but that it will be more easeful. So I am um, Kathy Mazak, and I am a mom of three, and I'm a professor at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez, where we are living through interesting um, uh, social and political times. I uh, I know that. Um, all of you who are in the United States are having a big day today as well. So I hope that this, um, me coming into your Facebook free feed this week will help you to live a more easeful um, end of your semester because we really need that. So one of, so I am a academic writing coach as well as a full tenured professor in um, linguistics and bilingualism and bilingual ed. That's my field. Um, and part of my message that I want to get out into the world is for women professors to be more gentle with themselves um, as we kind of proceed through the semester. So if you are watching, um, we are almost about to click over to the top of the hour when I'm hoping that people will will turn it, tune in. But if you're watching, go ahead and let me know where you're watching from um, in the comments. And um, also, maybe tell me how far are you away from the end of your semester. Um, we are three weeks away. We have seven Tuesday, Thursday classes left before the end of the semester. And I'm going to be very honest with you. Um, I'm not proud of this, but I am very behind in grading with no good excuses except for mentally not feeling like doing it, which is not a good reason to not grade your student stuff. And so I'm actually like super behind um, getting grades out on, from the midterm exam, which was late, but still I have no excuse. So my goal for this week is to get my students a grade report um, by Thursday morning because really they deserve it. <laughs> okay, so let me know where you're, um, where you're watching from and um, about how long are you away from the end of your semester. Okay, so again, this five-day live stream, I'm calling it a challenge, but really it's a five-day five live, live stream series, is about the kind of mindset shifts that we need in order to um, make it to the semester break without freaking out or burning out. Um, I blogged uh, last year about my be becoming very close to burning out at the end of last semester. It was a really... Um, intense time in Puerto Rico. And so, um, hi, Carolina, I'm so glad to see you. Oh my gosh, you're even closer to the end of the semester than we are. Ah! Okay, um, so um, anyway, I'm kind of determined to to uh, help people to not get to that point where you're like, feel like you're about to burn out. And that's what part of this series is about. Yesterday, I talked about lowering the bar. So I recommended a book by John Acuff called Finish. And one of the things he talks about in that book, it's it's a book about finishing anything or making uh, meeting any kind of goal. One of the things he says in that book is to half your goals. So I'm here to tell you that it's perfectly fine for you to half the goals that you had for yourself this semester at this late moment in the semester. Totally fine. In fact, it's recommended um, <laughs> so that you can lower the bar and be gentle on yourself as you go into the semester. Another um, big point that we covered yesterday was that you should think about 
the way that certain activities in our academic careers, our academic lives, I guess, kind of get more important at certain moments of the semester, and that actually these moments of the semester are rather predictable, right? Like we can pretty much say when things are going to ramp up. Um, and so what you, what I encourage you to do is to, you know, ahead of time, you're going to figure out when those times are, and it's okay to back off on some aspects of your career while other parts are ramping up. And then once like the grading season is over and your final grades are turned in, well, then you can turn again to reestablishing a nice writing rhythm, for example. So being um, conscious of the ebbs and flows of the semester. So before we get started in our talk today, which is about the comparison game, um, I want to just let you know that these this live stream series is brought to you by the Academic Women's Writing Collective, which is a monthly um, group that is a membership that um, that you join uh, monthly or you can pay for the whole year and each month you get um, a workshop and group coaching session um, the workshops are about um, topics related to writing and about our academic lives in general but we've talked about academic branding we've talked about um, we're going to talk about writing the lit review this month that's our next week's um, uh, um, workshop. Um, we're talking about setting writing goals. So there's lots of different things. You get access to the library of workshops um, when you join. And then we also have a lot of live components of that program, um, which basically are, revolve around co-writing. So we have a dedicated Zoom link where we jump on and we um, we write together. So that is something that's really helped people um, uh to get their writing done, even when they feel like they don't have time, they at least can take an hour out and see other people doing it with them and kind of say hi to their virtual friends and and sit together in a virtual way and get writing done. So those are some important aspects of the Writing Collective. If you are a person who wants to really focus on their writing, especially in the new year, I encourage you to join. Let me say hi to people. Hi in Dallas. Hi, Kate. Oh my goodness. Yes, um, Jism, that is our um, schedule two that we're over about December 4th. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> if you are interested in the Academic Women's Writing Collective, there's a little link under my face. Um, that's bit.ly slash AW Writing Collective. The AW is for Academic Women. Um, and so you can go and check out everything that's included and join us. It is a really kind of wonderful it's a wonderful place to be, a virtual place to be. All right, so we're talking about comparison. So here's a couple of things. <laughs> so the comparison game is a game that you will never win. <laughs> so, um, but it, I know, and I know because I've done it myself and I'm going to recount my personal experience, I know it's something that we do. So um, here's like, so to tell you my personal experience, I am in the you know, middle, I would guess I'm mid-career, right? And sometimes I see kind of the younger people in my field um, really like taking the field by storm and publishing in all the top journals and all these things. And I start to compare and I think, geez, you know, like I didn't do that when I was first starting out and I don't, I would like to do that now. And I don't know if that's where I should be putting my energy. So I start to think, wow, like, what are the reasons that I'm not good enough? And this is a really bad headspace to be in as you're trying to get anything done, right? So whenever we're thinking about ourselves that, like, we're not good enough, we're not performing high enough, we could do better, that that can be really kind of devastating for the things that, that we want and need to do, like getting our writing finished. Um, and so here's a few things I want you to ask yourself if you find yourself comparing yourself to other people. So one, a couple of things, right? One is that you can never see what kind of support systems the other person that you're comparing yourself to has behind the scenes. And these are not just support systems like um, at work, but also at home. So depending on the type of university you have, funding, if you have big grants, like there's so many factors that will influence how much support help you have in your job, 
Okay. So you could have, um, you could have a team of PhD students. You know, you have to take time to manage them, but they also are helping you to do your research. Um, you might have physical spaces and access to technology and things that, uh, so the person you're comparing yourself to, right, might have all of these kind of support systems. They might have super supportive um, administration that's really helping them to fund their work and helping them to, to making space for them to do their work. So if you're comparing how much writing output you're doing to how much writing somebody at an R1 is doing and you are not at an R1, then you are pay playing a comparison game that you can't win. But even if you're comparing yourself to someone at a similar place, at a, a similar institution to yours, you still can't win the comparison game because you don't know what's going on at home for those other people. You don't know what kind of support system they have. You don't know if they are, if they have a supportive spouse at home. You don't know if they're caregivers or not. You don't know if they live near their parents. And so their parents are helping them out with, you know, just, I just always, I'm jealous of people, like even my sister who gets to live near my mom because you know, that she has this kind of built in support systems. So you just don't know what, um, what's going on behind the scenes. So when you compare yourself with other people, all you're doing is like reflecting a mirror on all your, what you perceive to be as your faults. And that is never ever going to pay off for you. So not only are you just doing an activity, this comparing thing is you're not comparing um, you're not doing a comparison between equals because you can't possibly know all the factors and all the behind the scenes things about the other academic that you're comparing yourself to. So the big idea today, right? Yesterday's big idea was lower the bar. The big idea today is stop comparing. You are you and you are doing the best that you can inside the circumstances that you are living in your institution and in your in your home life as well. Um, for me, and something that came up on the in the comments yesterday, you know, returning from maternity is, you know, I, w w I was talking to somebody um, through the comments who has returned. This is her first year back from maternity, and she feels like. I, I'm just not getting as much done as everybody else. And it's like, no, you're not getting as much done as anybody else because you are, you know, taking care of a tiny human. And that drains your energy in such a way that you're just not going to ramp up to the same level of production that you were at before you had a baby. But there's lots and lots of other things that affect our production. You could be caring for an aging parent. You could be caring for who knows who else in your family or in your circles that is taking energy and time from you and that maybe deserves, I mean, certainly my children deserve that energy and time from me. But what I can't do is hold myself and who I am with the family that I have at the institution that I'm at and the resources that we have, I can't then compare myself to somebody at a university where they're teaching a one one or a one zero, and I can't, I don't know what the what kind of support systems and things that they have at home. So the big idea today is to quit the comparison game and to give yourself a break. Okay, so yesterday's big idea was lower the bar and half the goals, and this today's big idea is to quit the comparison game that you'll never win, and accept who you are and the circumstances under which you are trying to be as productive as you can. So a reminder again to go to the link below to check out the Academic Women's Writing Collective where we talk about issues like this inside of a private group. It's not a Facebook group. We use a tool called Mighty Networks where we've built our own social media platform. So there's no ads or distractions or anything like that. It's just the people who are inside of the group in the collective 
inside there, you can form your own writing circles by making connections with people. Um, we have people from all over the world, people from Latin America, Europe, Asia, Australia. Um, we have scholars who are working from Africa and who are uh, Skyping in, or Zooming in um, to our co-writing sessions from their field work. Um, really, it is a place where there are lots of different people doing lots of different things and um, in academia who have different situations that can help you through support. So um, I think it's safe to say that people don't join that group to then go in and be jealous of each other <laughs> or to be spiteful. No, we are a very supportive community um, and we're interested in really like developing our tools as academics in a way that helps us, helps the collective, right? Everybody who's involved to write and publish more and meet their goals. So I encourage you to check out the Academic Women's Writing Collective at the link below my face. And hold on, I need to look at my list of things to tell you what the the topic for tomorrow is. Okay. The topic for tomorrow is sometimes things weren't meant to get done. So I can't wait to talk about that one. That's one of my favorite um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite topics is, you know, those things. Have you ever found an old to-do list? Are all the things checked off? Did they all get done? Hmm, some of them didn't, and we are still surviving. So that's what we're talking about tomorrow at noon. I can't wait to see you back again, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day.